Hello, everybody, and um, thank you, Team um, TEDx, for putting this together. It's an amazing um, ceremony you've put together. Well done. Um, those who don't know me, my name is Vikash Ramia. I've heard my name before. You've heard my title. I'll just give you a brief definition, um, a brief uh, idea of who I am. I was born in Mauritius. I spent 21 years in Mauritius. Then I moved to Australia, where I spent 21 years. 21 years in Australia. I moved here last year, hoping to spend another 20 years in Dubai before I retire. So retirement and long-term thing is what we're going to talk about today. So my first question before I start is, do we have any psychic in the room tonight? Anyone with psychic powers? <laughs> you do. I know you do. I think everybody here do have some psychic powers. Um, what if I say you all do have psychic powers? Would you believe me? Yeah. yeah? Can I start training you to see if you have psychic powers? So in two hours from now, where would you be? Tomorrow, at this time, where? Uh, on the 25th of December, where would you be? At the age of 71 years old, where would you be? Very good. So financial planning, it's all about that. So what we've done is just do a bit of um, mathematical modeling to see how you live your life. And you would not believe me, you live your life in a very structured way. So why am I, why am I here talking to you about this? Because it is a very important issue. So let me tell you some of the problem that you're having. You're young, Everything in life is ahead of you, but you're not thinking about your retirement plan. And I think this is the last thing that you have on your mind right now, right? This is where you are all wrong. Uh, in the 1990s, we, we worked out that a number of people who are about to retire in 20 years, these guys had no money. And retirement was not looking something very good for them. And if you work with people who are about to retire and have no money, you will see it's a very sad end to life. So government around the world has been putting system in place so that you can have some money and you can live and retire. Now, for a guy like me, my retirement age is expected to be around 71 years of age, and that's why I ask you, where would you be? Now, the sad thing about this is um, they are projecting that people like me will die at the age of 103 to 105. That is 30 years more to live without working because you can't work after the age of 71. The worst case is you will not retire at 71. By the time you, your retirement age would, uh, would arrive, they will push it to maybe about 80. And that's because of what we call longe longevity risk. People are not dying early these days. Medicines and everything is making us living longer, which means we will have to work longer and save more money for the future. Now, when you are sick, where do you go to? Financial doctor, right? So if you have financial problem with regards to your retirement planning, who do you go to? A psychic. <laughs> to a financial doctor. Have you heard the term financial doctor? So um, if you work with um, the financial advisors or uh, financial planners in Australia, they consider themselves as um, financial doctors. So... What I will start with is talk about what these guys do. So financial planning uh, in, in Australia, it has got about um, four dimensions. The first one is retirement planning. We've been talking about that. Uh, there's a second one called insurance. I think here we call it pension, but in Australia we call it superannuation fund. And then how to make your money grow, which is the biggest question in the world, how to make money, investments. So they advise you on, on, on all these different grounds. So my task today is probably to try to convince you to start your retirement planning as of now. How so? That's what we're going to discuss. So if you go to Australia uh, now, you may find some very old people, like in their 70s, working part-time in supermarkets. And 
Do you know why they are working? It's past retirement age. That means they don't have enough money to live for another 20 years or so. That's why they advise to you have to go back to work. It's a very sad story, and this is what we are trying to prevent. So now we are trying to get people to be aware of this problem and start saving the minute you leave your university. So the minute you start working, you need to start thinking about saving money. So in Australia, we have... A, saving money is not an easy task, is it? It's the most difficult task. Who among you will save money? Not me. Definitely not me. So um, when you have a system where people don't save, then the government needs to intervene and force you to pay. And that's why in Australia we have, like, when the minute you start working, the government will take 9.5% of your salary paid by your employer in your pension fund. So this is a good in incentive for you to keep saving and hoping that you reach uh, all these things later on. That's called retirement planning. Um, the reason why I mention uh, sometimes you find all ladies working and sometimes all people as well working is because life can take a different turn in terms of having multiple divorce, multiple marriages. That means your income is sliced and dice. There's nothing left for you to retire. So retirement planning is very important to go and see a financial advisor to see how can they set up your plan so that you don't have to work later on. And you will not blame me if you run out of money. Life is meant not to be good to enjoy. And those people who plan early enough are the ones who have a very good and enjoyable retirement in the future. Now, a second one is insurance. You may think you don't need insurance. Now, um, from my experience, I've met um, 23 years old, 24 years old, thinking, I am too young. Why do I need to have insurance? Um, have you heard of something called trauma insurance? No? Trauma insurance? Trauma insurance is if you have a disease, like uh, cancer, if you get diagnosed with cancer, if you have an insurance like this, it will pay you off a large sum of money. And unfortunately, this money will be used for your payment of your um, medical bills, but also you won't be able to work for a couple of years or so. Now, if you have a trauma insurance, while you're going through cancer, it's already a difficult life, but you will have the money, you will have a roof under your head, you'll have money coming in for your food, for everything else. I have seen a number of people who don't, are not aware of these um, amazing insurance tools like trauma insurance, uh, for instance. And those who do have it, they tend to, while going through cancer and coming back from it, at least the financial section is secured. Those who don't, it's a terrible life. I've seen people having to move out of their house, selling their house, liquidating everything, and then even if they have a family, the family will split because they don't have enough money. It is really a nightmare. So the people that I work with in Australia, the financial planners, and they happen to be also a lot of my students, and when they, when they go to see clients sometimes, their clients, they will tell you, my client has just been diagnosed with X cancer, but I went there with a check of X thousand, we're talking about 200,000 Australian here, or 100,000 Australian, depending on how much you paid for. Well, there's a smile on their face. They say, at least I know I am okay, financially. So my, I don't have to lose my house, I don't have to lose anything. So what I'm trying to tell you is, these aspects, you need to see it now. Whether you're young, insurance, if you lose your, uh, for instance, if you lose your job, we have what we call an income protection insurance. So there's all sorts of tools that are not seen by you right now because you think you're young, invincible, but life is different. So you better be prepared for it. And um, Now, what I'm going to do is to take you to a financial planning firm and help you to choose one. Usually, I'll ask you to sort of um, close your eyes. Oh, okay, close your eyes and enter a financial planning firm. Has anyone walked into a financial planning firm before? <laughs> so you won't know what, what you'll see. Okay. So what I have here is um, a financial planning firm. When you walk in, you will find people, usually um, with a business degree. They will be male and female. So you have to make a choice. Do I go with a male or a female person? Is there a difference? 
So if you study business, you will know that um, females tend to be risk-averse, meaning not taking risk. Male wants to take risk. Now, what sort of advice would they give you? If you go to one, you may have a different advice. But if you have one, you have a different one. So knowing which one to choose is important. The next one is you will find a young graduate. So a fresh graduate from uh, a UWD becoming a financial advisor. They're sitting there giving advice. Then you have the owner of a firm who's in his 60s, very well experienced. Now, who would you choose as an advisor, the older one or the younger one? Because they could lead to different aspects of... Um, now, you could have, like I said, a fresh graduate. Um, you can see they just bought their first suit. They're wearing it every day. After five, um, five months, they're wearing the same suit because they don't have enough money. And then you see somebody who's reached the top end of a scale in terms of salary, having their Rolex around. And of course, people will be tempted to go to the Rolex one, right? So sometimes you have um, some fortunate ones to have gone through multiple divorces, being single after so many times, and others being married. Who of these people will give you a better advice? Um, some of them will be educated. Some of them will have a PhD. Some of them won't have any education. Now, which one will give you a good advice? So, it becomes very complex once you start asking these questions around how to choose a financial advisor. Now, the complexity doesn't stop here. In finance, um, we train our students to be confident. But as they embark in the journey where there's a lot of uncertainties, um, they will... They will, um, um, they will engage into overconfidence, meaning that they will have um, trouble forecasting the future, and overconfidence will kick in. There's a lot of behavioral biases. So how do you make decisions with, let's say, a female who's overconfident giving you advice in retirement? A female being overconfident giving you advice on insurance. So they may make a lot of mistakes. So there's a lot of questions. So what we've done, uh, it's a four-year study um, that we've carried out, and we sort of mentioned all these things that one has to do. And I will, I will show you some of the things that you will face, which is a reality. When you go and see these advisors, this would be the list of fees they're going to charge you. It's a long list. It's scary, isn't it? So, uh, in Australia, we made a recommendation to the government that the only fees they should charge is advisory fee, administration fee, and insurance fees. So, if you go and see one of them, and they give you a whole list of fees, you know they're trying to get money off you. So, tell them you met me, and I say only the first three ones can be charged. And they will be uh, okay to give you that. And also, they make your life very difficult. They will give you a document. Uh, it's called a statement of advice, SOA. And that will have probably about 50 pages, including all this information. And you look at this, you think, oh, I'm not prepared. You know, I'm 21 years old. I don't have time for 50 pages and to prepare for the future. It's sort of too complex. You put it behind. So if you get your documents, just do me a favor. Check your account balance, amount invested, and your return on investment. These are three key elements, and then you can bury it out. Okay. So um, to... to I think um, what I will um, show you is, well, first let me go there. Um, I'll show you a bit of future. So in finance, uh, finance people tend to have all these behavioral biases. Um, behavioral biases, are they good or bad? Let me explain this. So if you have somebody, do you have a friend who's very stingy? When you go to... Uh, for lunch or dinner, they will tell you, oh, you ate uh, one more uh, spoon more than me, you have to pay 50 cents more. Or you so this is a stingy person, right? That's called a behavioral bias. So in finance, we like people like this, because if you have people owing you money, <coughs> owing your business money, you recruit somebody with this bias. So we use behavioral biases to recruit in finance. So every single one of them uh, is an attribute. So in financial planning, there are a few of the ones that um, are, um, are more present than the other. So 
They are self-serving bias, overconfidence, representativeness, not so much a loss aversion. Now, self-serving bias, do you know somebody who's, when anything bad that happens, they blame somebody else or something else? And every time something good, it's all thanks to them, that's called self-serving bias, okay? So there's a lot of financial advisors who have this bias, and you need to be worried about some of those. And overconfidence is more pronounced in people who are married. Now, what I'll do is I'll jump here. Remember these um, older women that I was telling you working in supermarkets? Okay? The reason why they had to go was after a crisis. They didn't have much money, and the crisis took about 40% of their money. So they had to go and work. So the crisis has a massive impact on a number of people when it comes to retirement. So what I'm trying to tell you is, even if you have a good financial planning in place, the financial system is not a guarantee. It's not a given. Something can happen. Things can wash away. But if you don't have a plan, it's even worse. Okay. So baby boomers, these are the old ones that you will see now working. And some of these people have got only about 80000 to 150000 Australian dollars in their pocket. And to have a good retirement, a finance professor uh, in Australia will retire, and they will get about $1.2 mil in their superannuation account to retire. So you can see the difference, having a good life and having a terrible life. Okay? So I will go to the conclusion by saying... Um, you need to start planning for your retirement now. Now, I have given you all these complicated scenarios about financial planners, how to choose them. And it is important to do that. But the good news about the Australian one is we are regulated. The, the government has regulated this market. So the SOE is something that is binding that will be reviewed by the government in case there's any trouble. So, whether you're young, rich, old, or any of his biases, when it comes to giving advice on the SOE, or sorry, a statement of advice, they have to give you the right advice. So in a way, all these difficult things that can happen will disappear. So what I'm trying to tell you is, if you walk into a financial planning business in Australia, you should be okay. Now, if you take that model that I've worked on, you take it into a different country, you've got to be aware of the other things. So it, it may not work in the same way. So that's my talk about finding a financial doctor, and you need to start looking for it probably as of now. Thank you.